This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to take a look at work problems, and I'm going to divide this up into three sections. The first section, we're going to talk about the definition of work, and uh, the second section, we're going to talk about some easy problems, and then in the third section, a difficult problem. Let's get started. All right, so what is work? Well, work is defined mathematically as force times a distance. Uh, all right, so what does that mean? You know, if you have a force going this way and you carry out that force for a certain amount of distance, it's extremely simple. You take the force, whatever it is, multiply it by how far you enact it, and there you go. You get the amount of work that's been done. Um, you could... As long as the force and the distance are going in the same direction, it doesn't matter what direction they're going, but as long as they're in the same direction, then it's extremely easy to calculate work. The only problem is that when you get it, the force and the distance are not acting in concert with each other, if they're acting at an angle. Okay, so that's where you have to use some knowledge of vectors. And we're going to get to, into those problems, those weird problems where the force and the distance are not working together. We'll talk about how to deal with that mathematically. It's going to involve a little bit of trig. All right, so let's get to the easy problems first. All right, so let's go through our first easy problem. So let's say we have this horizontal force, and uh, let's say it's 30 pounds of force. And let's say that we're going to carry out this 30 pound force for 10 feet in the same direction. So it's like you're pushing on something with a 30 pound force and you do it for 10 feet. All right, well, let's carry out the mathematics. So the work is defined as force times a distance. So I want to calculate. So I'm going to take this force, it's just 30 pounds. I'm going to multiply it by 10 feet, and I'm going to get 300 foot-pounds. There you go. I've got 300 foot-pounds of work. All right, here's our second example. So let's say that we have a 20 Newton force that we're exerting in a vertical direction. And uh, we're going to carry out that force for five meters in the same direction. So it's like you're lifting something up. Uh, and we're going to lift it up with a 20 Newton force for five meters. So let's calculate the work done. So if work is force times a distance, I'm going to put my 20 Newtons. I'm going to multiply it by my five meters. I get 100 Newton meters. Okay, so if you have a Newton meter, it turns out there's a special unit for that. We call those joules. And not the J-E-W-E-L, different kind of joule. We're talking about joules, this. Or sometimes we just write this as 100 J. All right, this is one of those difficult problems I was talking about earlier. So here we've got a 40-pound force, and our 40-pound force is being exerted in a very strange direction. So if we were to graph this, imagine that, if I graph this here, that if I go one unit to the right and three units up, that it's going in this direction. Um, this is the direction. It's not the force, just the force is going in that direction. So what we need to do first is figure out what this angle is. Uh, why do we have to figure out what this angle is? Because we're going to do some trigonometry. Uh, and we have to do trigonometry on this problem as opposed to the last because we've got the force that's going in this direction. But then again, the object is moving from 0, 0 to way over here, right, at 15, 0. So the force is going over here, but the distance being traveled is this way. So we've got to do something about the angle between uh, the direction and the movement. 
Okay, so let's do that before we do anything. So the first thing I'd like to do is figure out, well, what is this angle? Okay, well, we could use some trigonometry. That's why we learned it. We know that if we take the tangent of this angle, it's got to be equal to opposite over adjacent. We could figure out what the angle is if we just take the inverse tan. All right. If we take the inverse tan, I did this earlier, and I get 71.565. Just make sure your calculator is in degrees, and you're just taking the inverse. Okay, so we've got the angle. Great. Okay, now what does this mean? Well, let's now take a look at how this applies to our force. Okay, so now if I graph the force itself, so now I know I've got this really powerful 40 pound force. I know the angle right there. I'm just going to leave that as theta. And I've got that Okay, but the problem is, like I said earlier, is that we're moving the object from the origin, and we're going to move it way over here. Let's say over here is 15, 0. Okay, so we're, we're moving it this entire distance. Well, that distance is horizontal. This force is not horizontal. So what I have to do is figure out, well, What's the vertical force? I'll call that force in the y direction. And then what's the horizontal force? Okay, what's the force in the x direction, right? If this is our force right here, I'll call this F. I want to know what these two are. Now, I really don't care about this vertical force. Don't care about it. I only want to know what the horizontal force is, not the vertical force, because this is the force that's moving in the direction that I care about. So in other words, what this means is when we apply this 40 pound force at this angle, some of the force is vertical, some of it is horizontal. We only care about the horizontal. All right, so now how do we calculate this horizontal force? Well, let's go back to trigonometry, right? So, um, Using trigonometry, we know that, hmm, horizontal, that's like an X thing. So if I take the cosine of this angle, then I know it's got to be equal to adjacent. That's the horizontal force. And we're going to divide it by this force, which is 40. All right, well, I'm going to cross multiply to get this horizontal force. So I'm going to take 40 times the cosine of this angle right here. 71.565. Okay, so I basically going to I'm going to throw this into a calculator. I'm going to multiply. And again, I did this earlier, and I get a 6.326. Okay, and of course, this is pounds. Pounds. All right, now it continues, right? Because if I'm going to calculate work, work is force times the distance. So I'm going to take this horizontal force, pounds, and I'm going to multiply it times the distance. Well, if, if it's going from 0, 0 to 15, 0, that's 15. And we said that the units are in feet. Okay, so I'm going to multiply these two together. Again, I did this earlier. And I'm getting... And again, this is foot pounds. There you got it. There you go. Okay, so we've got our answer. We've got the, the work done. Just a little tricky with dealing with that. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguy.com. We've got hundreds, literally hundreds of lessons, quizzes, and videos. So check us out. I think you're going to find them understandable, and you're going to like math more after dealing with MathGuide. All right.
Take care. Have a great day. Don't work too hard. <laughs>